You can create just about any type of publication you can imagine using Microsoft Publisher 2013. The templates make it easy because you don't have to have any design experience. The presentation you create can look like it came from a graphics designer. And best yet, it only takes you a little bit of time to do it. You can also create several different types of publications that use the same options and information in Publisher 2013. And we'll teach you how to do that too. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a publication. We're going to use a template. Even though Publisher 2013 gives you the ability to create publications from a blank page, templates can make creating presentations a lot quicker and easier. To find a template, either open Publisher or, if you already have Publisher open like we do here, click on the File tab to go to the Backstage area and then click on New. You'll see all the templates pictured here to the right of this green column. And you can choose one of the templates if you see one that you want to use. And if you have a specific template in mind, you can also use the Search feature to find a template that you want. And that's located just right here above the blank publications. To search for a template, you'll just enter the type of publication that you want to use. We're going to search for a photo album. And just hit enter. And here you can see all the templates that match our search. Choose the template that you want to use by clicking on it. And then you'll see a description of the template. Click the Create button to create the template as a publication. It then opens up here in Publisher the same way your blank publication did in the first lesson. Now let's look at the page navigation pane for our template. You can customize any of the pages in the publication and we'll learn to do that in this lesson. Now each publication you create, whether you create it from a template or from scratch, is going to be made up of objects. A picture that you insert, for example, is an object. A table that you insert is also an object. Text that you insert is contained within an object. And you get the idea. When you customize a publication, you'll customize the different objects by first selecting the object and then making the changes. Whenever you select an object, you'll see a bounding box around it. So for example, if we select this image, you'll see that the bounding box appears. And if you remember this simple step, it'll make customizing your publications much easier. Now let's start to customize the template we selected by replacing the images with ones of our own. Whenever you want to insert an image into a publication, you'll go up here to the Insert tab on the ribbon. And we'll learn all about images later in this course. But for now, let's talk about the very basics of inserting an image from your computer to replace a placeholder image in a template. We're going to replace the placeholder image here. To do this, go to the View tab. And here in the Show group, you're going to place a check mark beside the Graphics Manager. And you can see the Graphics Manager opens right here on the right side of our screen. The Graphics Manager shows you all graphics in the template. It's easier to use if you put a check mark next to the Show Thumbnail option. That way you can see the actual images instead of just the names. Select the image that you want to replace by clicking on it in the Publication or in the Graphics Manager. As you can see, it now has a thick blue border around it. When you hover the mouse over the image in the Graphics Manager, you'll see this downward arrow appears. If you click on it, you'll see a context menu as shown here. Choose Replace This Picture. Then you'll be able to find the location of your image and select the picture that you'd like to use instead of the placeholder. Double click on it and as you can see, Publisher replaces the image for us, making sure the new image is sized and positioned correctly. Now if you look here again with our new picture in the publication, you'll see black marks all around the edges of the picture. They appear at the top, bottom, left, right, and all of the corners of the image. These are called crop marks, and this means that you can now cut away edges of the picture if you want. So for example, if I didn't want quite so much blank space on the bottom here. So if you want to crop the image, click on one of the crop marks and then drag it inward. You can see this grayed out space here and that's to let us know what part of the image will be cropping away. Now go to the Picture Tools Format tab on the ribbon and go over here to the Crop group. Click on the downward arrow on the Crop button and click Crop. And you can see our gray spot has now been cropped away. Now you can also change the text on this template. We're going to learn more about text later in the course, but for now we're going to teach you just the very basics of editing text in a template. 
In Publisher 2013, all the text that you add to a publication is added inside of text boxes. If you've ever used Microsoft Word before, you know that you can just start typing anywhere in a document. In Publisher, it's different. You can type text inside text boxes. It may seem like a hassle at first, but it's really not because you can easily drag and drop the text boxes anywhere in a publication. To edit text in a text box, click the chunk of text that you want to edit to select it. If you wanted to delete everything, you can drag and highlight it, and then you can just start typing. And if you want, you can change the font size and the font colors and so forth by clicking on the text box tools format tab in the ribbon. In this ribbon, you can format the text in all sorts of ways. So just be creative and play around with it. It can be a lot of fun. Now once you're done with your publication, it's time to save it. To save it, click on the file tab. You can click save on the left to save the publication under the same file name that it already has if it's an existing file. Or if it's a new file, you can click on save as so you can give it a name to help you identify it later. And you'll see this window appear. First, you'll choose where you want to save the file. You can save it to the cloud or the SkyDrive, your computer, or you can add a place such as a SharePoint. We're going to choose computer. As you can see, you can now choose a location on your computer. You can use one of the recently used folders, or you can find the location where you want to save the publication too. We're going to choose documents. Type a file name in the name field, and you'll select a format for your publication in the save as type field. .pub, which is a publisher file, is the most common. This format allows you to open, edit, and work on your publisher file. But if you prefer, you can also save your publication as a PDF, JPEG, Word file, and so forth. Click the Save button when you're finished. You can see that our name of our publication has changed up here. To close a publication, you can do two things. You can click on the X at the top right of the publisher window, or you can go to the Backstage view and click Close here on the left. Now there may be times when using Publisher 2013 that you forget how to do something or need assistance completing a task. To access the help files in Publisher 2013, click on the question mark symbol here at the top right of the screen. When you click on help, you'll see this window open. You can search Publisher's online help by entering what you need help with in the search box. Or you can choose a popular search topic. Click the X at the top right of the screen to close help.